Welcome to Life Laughter Divorce, episode 69. I am your host, Leanne Linsky. And I'm the boyfriend. Welcome back to another wonderful week of divorce. We are super excited to be here. Hey, while you're out there tuning in, make sure you rate, review, and subscribe. And if you're somewhere safe, make sure you check out the website at lifelaughterdivorce. Like in your bomb shelter? <laughs> like what? I know. It's, <laughs> as soon as I said that, I was like... If you're not driving, if you're not actually occupying or working heavy machinery, go ahead and pull out your phone and you can text us as or long email as you're us. not like touching hot electrical wires at the moment. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're safe, if you're not. Do yeah, we, if you're, if safe, you're safe, safe, operate your phone, send us a message. We would greatly appreciate that. Tell us. Tell us, a, send us a picture of you in your safety glasses. <laughs> send us in your OSHA approved get up for I'll today. No, you- <laughs> no, no, don't stop. All right. We've tried introing this episode ten, 10 times now. So no, we are glad to be here. And hey, if you're out there somewhere safe tuning in and you're rate reviewing, subscribe, make sure you check out the website at lifelafterdivorce.com and take a look around and shop in our online store. So now that we got that out of the way, boyfriend. Are we good? I think we're good now. Are you safe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're in the same room as me, so exactly. probably not. So, uh, obviously... So, our, I got a question. Yeah, I've got an answer. Do you? Maybe. <laughs> I've got a safety pin. So, you've been married hmm. to multiple people. Yes, <laughs> yes. two. <laughs> That's multiple. Yes. It's more than one. Yes. Uh, so, so... We all hear about relationships and how they evolve and all this stuff. Uh, how were you? Were you friends with these individuals, or was it like the traditional dating? Like, where you went out with the like you got asked out? That's the first time you sort of met them, like at a coffee shop or something, and then you had your dates and it evolved into something. Or did you know any of your husbands before you started dating? Do you want the long answer or the short answer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know you're going to kill me. So, so I would say I knew them before we started dating, but I didn't know my first, like my first husband, I didn't know all that long before we started dating. My second husband, I knew for some time before we started, like a lot of, it was a long time before we, not a long, not like in years long, but like my. So let's start with, let's start with husband H1, one. H1, months. It was months before we started dating. So you knew H you knew your husband your first husband months before you started dating. Yeah. Were you like friends or how what kind of relationship was that? Um I met him through my roommate who had a crush on him. Ooh, the love triangle. Yes, it was nasty because I didn't want to go out with him if she were gonna be angry and she was angry and I told her I wouldn't go out Hold with on, him. Hold on, did you want to go out with him? I didn't I thought he was good looking. I thought he was nice, but I didn't put it in my mind that he was available to me because yeah, because you shut that off I when one of your friends off. when exactly. one of your friends yeah, guys have rules on this right, and there was rules, and she was just angry because he had put her in the friend zone and liked me, and whether I went out with him or not, she was going to treat me like crap. So ah, uh, see, that's guys are different that yeah. way. Girls are not, unfortunately. We'll have a beer. We'll fight it out and be like, all right, you win, take her. And we're all friends after that. No, she continued being angry for quite some time. And so um, as a result, that turned him off to her even more. And he's like. And you were living with her. And I was living with her. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it made your life not Mm -hmm. fun either. It was really terrible. Yeah. Because it made me feel super awkward around him and then terrible around her. And after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm. I'm so tired of listening to you complain about the situation because she was out sleeping around with a bunch of other people, <laughs> but yet nobody could touch any, any of the like 10 guys that she liked. So it was ridiculous. Yeah. So, so, but okay. So from my perspective, that wasn't much different than being courted because he liked you. Yeah. So it wasn't like you guys were friends, like just in the friend zone. No, friends. We were never friends in the friend zone. Like I was just getting to know him because she told me to go hang out with them. So. And I just got to know him, but I was never like in the friend zone with him. I was just like, that's her. He liked you. He pursued you. Nothing yeah. happened for months, months years, months. Months. Yeah. months. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then finally you yeah. gave in or just what happened? Yeah. Finally, I said, you know what? We should probably just go out on a date. I don't remember exactly. It was so long ago. 
But at some point, I was just like, you know what? Yeah, I'll go. And then I was like, sure, I'll go out with you. I mean, because what's the difference? She already hated me anyway. So then, so then you got married to him. Did, did she go to your wedding? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> no, we hadn't talked to her in a long time. Uh, that's yeah. probably smart. Yeah. So you said you knew husband two for a while. Did you know husband two longer than you knew the other guy before you started dating him? Uh, or prob- husband one? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So you knew husband two for more than a few months than you start, before you started dating him? <laughs> yeah. I don't. And honestly, like, I don't remember how long I knew him for, but it was probably over a year or so. Before well, you started dating? Yeah. Wow. I don't I don't remember how long I knew him before we started dating. Like acquaintances or were you guys friends first? Worked or? together, same Worked company. Together. Yeah. Did he like you the whole time? Was it one of those things again he pursued you but you pushed him away kind of thing? Yeah, and I didn't want to date anybody for a while. So, so but, again, yeah. so it's not just a friendship. There was a there was a known interest yeah, and, it, and yeah, yeah. 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 And it was funny cuz both both men I married, I didn't even want to date in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hmm, I never thought of it that way before. But yeah, so there's that. But but I, I guess now, have you had someone in your life that you had in the friend zone that you ended up dating? Uh, I'm thinking I should play Jeopardy music right now. Do, 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 no, you do, don't know. No. I'll just find, I'll play it. <laughs> um, I... I think there was one, but this would have been high school and she would date. I think she dated her, one of my friends first and then, or did I date her first? I think she dated one of my friends first, broke up with him and then dated me and we're in high school. So the rules are a little more great at that point. Yeah. Um, college, the rules are the rules. Um, so but, uh, a friend and I were cool about it and never went anywhere. We only dated a few months. Right. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, most of the women I've dated has just been, hey, I'm interested in you. Let's make this happen. And it either does or doesn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to think like of people I've dated in general. I think I've ended up dating people that may have been in the friend zone at some point or another. And then I'm like, why'd I do that? Really? Yeah. Has not worked out for you? No. Really? No, I think... Aren't you supposed to be friends with the person you marry before you? Yeah, but not. So I think, that, well, I think, yes, I think it's different though, in the sense of like where, you know, when you meet somebody and you consider you, you're like, you follow your instinct, you know, your gut in, in some ways of like, um, no, I don't want to date this person. Or maybe they've asked me out many times. Cause like for my husband, both of them had asked me out and I didn't want to, you know, like, for whatever reason, maybe not necessarily them or something, but whatever. And then same later, like there were people who pursued me for a long time and I always told them no up front and then later told them no again. And then I ended up going out with them and it been a stupid, terrible decision. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, why, why, why? And the persistence wore me down. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Friend zones. I don't, I guess I only see that really in the movies where it works out. Yeah, and that's a great segue to our guest today because True. this is something that I would see, see in, a, in movie. a movie. Yeah, really, it actually really is. And so, and this week our story uh, is very interesting because last week in episode sixty-eight we heard from Chris. This week, and, and that was, last week was all about in episode sixty-eight was all about Chris's experience and how he was affected by marriage and divorce and affairs among generations in his family rather than his own firsthand experience, but how he was affected as family member this week, we're going to hear from Chris's wife, Misty and Misty is going to tell us her own journey of how she met her first husband and how Chris played a role in all of this, this. So which makes it, which is the movie part of it. Right. <laughs> so sit back, Grab a drink. <laughs> you may need to. So once again, here is Misty, Chris, and our friend Glenn. Without further ado. Welcome to 
Wife Laughter Divorce podcast, Misty and Chris. Thank you. The Very boyfriend's on this here. one, too. Yes, we're all here. <laughs> nice this to finally is, meet you. Yes. We're on may location I, in Vegas. May I call you Mr. Friend? Yes, you may. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Friend. Mr. Friend. <laughs> all right. Well, this is going to be... So, we're... <laughs> Misty. Yes. Today, we're talking a little bit about your story. Well, a lot about your story. So, where do we begin? Um, I guess we should begin back in college. Um, I'm from Texas, which was last year, last year. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I met, I was graduating college. Um, I had met my then boyfriend, um, in marching band. Um, and it was kind of like that I was graduating and we were together and I was like, uh, yeah, how am I going to meet other people? Like, cause I'm very introverted and you can probably tell from this. So, <laughs> as you're this like podcast. gripping the edge so of like, your seat. Yeah. I, so you met your, your ex in band camp or in marching band. <laughs> <laughs> I technically, I, I, I did. Um, and what instrument did you play? I played the flute. Yes. <laughs> band camp and flute. But, um, you know, a week before, um, school starts, in um, college, usually you have like a week where you learn all the marching fundamentals and you start to learn um, the music that you're playing for the football games and all of that shit. You really get so, a jump on the season. Yeah. Because it's like cramming. It's basically all day for five days. Um, and I was the band librarian, which meant that I handed out everybody's music. So um, I didn't even know there was such a thing as band librarian. There, there is in music schools, at least. Okay. Our music school, we went to the University of North Texas, which is one of the largest music schools in the country. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty large body of of music majors. And you were there? Uh, well, yes. Okay. She yeah. actually, we graduated the same year from high school, but she started North Texas like a normal person freshman year, and I was in community college because, you know. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I was there with you. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, I met him in in band camp, and um, I actually didn't like him at first. And I am still talking about my um, ex. ex husband. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> um, I thought he was he was a jerk because he came up to get his music, and his last name is very hard to um, spell. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to refrain from saying what it is. But yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he comes up to me and, um, you know, I'm giving him his music and, and he's like, my name's, blah, 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 we'll just say Otto von Schnitzel plus crack. Yeah. And then he spells it and I'm like, dude, I can figure it out. Your name's on a list, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no other person like that on this list. So I, you know, I, I really just thought he was a jackass really at first you, you, um, basically make all your friends in marching band when you're in marching band. And that's a lot of, um, you know, cause you're spending so much time together. Um, so my ex became really good friends with my click. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we kind of got to know each other that way. And he was very, um, he loved to tell stories. He, his father was a professor, um, and he traveled for his work, um, he was in um, geology and geophysics. So his father did? His father okay. was. Um, <clears throat> so uh, he knew a lot of things, to, according to me. <laughs> Sorry. He, knew, he, he knew, you know, to me, as somebody who was interested in international relations, um, I was fascinated by all the places he'd been and all the stories that he'd tell. And, and he, was, he was like, oh, yeah, and I can cook and... And I've made pasta from scratch and all this other stuff. And and uh, it was just, so at the time, I was, I guess, uh, what's a good Hungry? word? Hungry? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I can interject was, a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, you have no, a question. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. Um, having known both of them at the time, and I met Misty before, before the ex did, Um. Misty's very shy and not really fully aware that the guys in the band were after her. Not all of them, but there were men who were interested in her. 
And yeah. it just wasn't kind of registering in her mind. She's still shaking her head no. Right. No, she knows she knows yeah. that I mean I could I could name off people and it just just kind of yeah. didn't register. So I think when the ex with with all of his gregariousness, he was very larger than life. Um it made a lot of sense. Yeah. So to, so yeah, I was I was very much drawn to his personality because as an introvert, you know, introverts tend to to be drawn more to extroverts. Right. And he was definitely an extrovert. Um, so, you know, it, we dated for about a year um, and we got engaged in 1997 and um, then got married in 1998. And even the, even the proposal was like messed up because, <laughs> which, oh, no. yeah, it was, it was actually my fault. I, and I will fully take responsibility for this, but he had. How was how was? Yeah. The, no, hold on, time out, time out, time out. Yeah, I look over at the boyfriend, <laughs> and he's looking at me like, "What?" So, so the proposals, the the dude's deal. How is it your fault? Don't take it. Don't don't well, take no. Well, let me explain <laughs> first, and then you can make it your own determination. But, um, so. <laughs> He told me how he was going to propose, which was really, that was his fault. That's terrible. That's, yeah. yeah. That's dumb. That was a really <laughs> dumb thing to do. And <laughs> he, do he, he was really into uh, marine life. Um, and he loved going to, um, to the aquariums and all of that stuff. And, um, and so he wanted to propose to me at the Fort Worth Zoo in the aquarium area. And then it didn't happen. Did he send you an agenda? Did he tell you this? <laughs> he's he's very actually he he does like to make a you know kind of an agenda. Whenever we traveled, it was like, okay, we're gonna go to do this, and we're gonna go do this, and we're gonna. I mean, like you know, it was not yeah. a vacation. It was strict times, and you know, we're we're gonna see these, this on this day and that on that day. So yeah, he he pretty much was very. Then at six o'clock at this time, before we have right. dinner, I'm going to propose to you in front of this fish. <laughs> remind me, <laughs> exactly. re, remind me when we get to your actual wedding day. He does it then again, and I, I will. I have the. Anyway, okay. So, we'll get to that. so yeah. Um, so he, it didn't happen, and but he told you it was going to happen. Yes, and so I was pissed. Well, yeah. Um, and you know, to be honest, there was a lot of people there, of course, because it's the freaking zoo, and everybody and their brother. It was it a nice day. Was a it, was, zoo. it was it was a public zoo. place, it was so such a the public zoo. was there. So, um, and we'd been to the this zoo before, um, and so he knew that it was going to be busy. I mean, it was like a Saturday, so yeah, it's going to be freaking busy. Um, so I'm pissed off all the way home. And this is like, it's probably about 30 to 45 minutes from the Fort Worth Zoo back to Denton where we lived. And, um, and he took me to a park and then that's when he proposed. Did you say this is not the zoo? <laughs> there are no fish here. No, right then and there. I mean, it, it didn't start off very well. The weird part right of this there. is that this is where he wants to propose. Right, not where it I... Not, it really had nothing to do with what she wanted. Yeah. And he didn't even do it the way he said. And to be honest, since his, um, since I've left him, I have not been to a zoo or an aquarium. <laughs> Scarred for life. Right? I, I am. Yeah. I can't stand zoos or aquariums anymore. Can't, oh, I can't yeah. handle them. No. Actually, I, technically, I've been to Mandalay Bay Aquarium, but, you know, That's whatever. That's a casino. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's other reasons Are you to there for there. work or something? No, I took my family there. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, so, okay, so going back, so now you're at the park and he's proposing. Mm -hmm. What made you say yes? Because you were already mad. <laughs> yeah. You had to have been mad at that time. You'd been like, no, <laughs> filter ring back at him and well, do it right. <laughs> again, um, I was... At this point, I was out of school. I had graduated. Um, and all of my friends were getting uh, engaged and, or getting married right then. Um, <laughs> Boyfriend the, shaking his the head. The answer like, is oh. Texas. Yes, I'm from Texas. She's from the South. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it, you're expected to be married by a certain time and you're expected to have children by a certain time. And I know that's a common theme mm -hmm. um, with some of your guests that you've had. Um, that you know, it's, it's, it, you have to. And I, as an intro, introvert, I'm like, well, 
I have no idea where I'm going to meet somebody else. So I kind of was settling, Mm -hmm. which is really shitty, but kind of, and (laughs) again, on paper, he was was compared to a lot of the people who in Texas that we knew he was worldly. Yeah. The family was educated. They were, Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they weren't like super wealthy, but they were, they had money. They had money. And uh, he was when you when you got to know him, he was fun and gregarious and outgoing and charming and all that's all great. Things. That's great yeah. for a buddy. But yeah. did you love him? I thought I did. Yeah, you know. It, and at that age, I uh, it, and how I basically you? I was I was twenty one when we started dating and twenty. You got married at twenty four. No, or no, twenty three. I was yeah. <laughs> it was twenty three yeah. of nineteen ninety eight. This sounds familiar. Um. So, yeah, I was just, I was worried that I wasn't going to meet anybody else. Yeah. So did you know at that point you were settling or was it something that mm-hmm. you figured out down the road? I figured out down the road. Yeah. Although, um, you know, I have to say that I probably knew it deep down and just wouldn't allow myself to. It. You had all yeah. the other things in your head about this is the time. This right, is, oh, yeah. right. And you were just excited, like, yay, finally, like it's yeah. happening. Let's move forward. I know what I want to do. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I would. your hand, Chris. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to step on anybody. <laughs> no, it's um, having been a witness to all this, because at the time, Misty and I, like, uh, she and I met in band as well. And. I became friends with them kind of after the fact, just because of my own school dealings. And I kind of joined the group and made friends with the ex-husband. And I was present for most of this stuff during that year leading up to the wedding. And the the amount of arguing, petty arguing that was occurring in the year leading up to their wedding oh, was it wasn't out f- of control. It wasn't just that year. It was like from the start of our relationship. We argued. Well, you didn't even like him when you first met him. I know. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right? It's, it, it, was, it was really a dumb what, what thing for me to do. What kind of arguing, though? Was it just like an antagonistic? I'm right. You're wrong. I'm right. No, I'm right. Oh. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. Oh, and, wow. and, and what pissed me off is like, I if I know that I'm right, I will argue it until, you know, and I would even look up. This was, you know, pre-Google. Google, really. Yeah. And Wikipedia and all of that. So it was hard to look up, but I'm like, no, I learned in, the, in, in this class, I learned this and you did not take that class and you're making shit up. And he would make shit up all the time. And the other thing that he would do is um, my, at the time, my parents, um, well, I had my mom in um, one suburb of Dallas and my dad, in another suburb of Dallas. And we were living in a the same suburb as my dad. Um, But whenever we would go visit my mom, he would like start fights with me. So that by the time I got to my mom's house, I'm like literally in tears. Completely. Just, and it was just, it was for no reason. I don't even remember what half the arguments were. They were just really stupid, just bullshit. And, you know, he played devil's advocate with me basically. And he did this with everybody. Really? He did it with mm-hmm. everybody. He rubbed, the first time I met him was in marching band, and we were in the same kind of section, and he was barking at people. And I I am notoriously mouthy, and but in a silly way. And I just started making fun of him. So I would get laughs at his expense. And eventually, he and I, he, I started making him laugh. And once we became friends, you know, that abrasiveness, he'd be like, oh, he's from back east, or that's, you know, that kind of stuff. When we became better friends, he was doing the similar stuff to her that he would do. He would same thing to me that he would do to her, just not daily. And it's different when you're just the guy, your guy friend. Yeah. Because there's no emotional stake. I could just be like, you know what, just whatever, dude, and go home. I don't have to. She had to go home with this guy, or or whatever. I'm engaged mm-hmm. with him. But he would he would do the same kind of thing, which is find some piece of minutia, and argue with it, argue it into the ground. Even in in like to the point where I would actually go and find it and go, and then he was like, mm-hmm, no, no, it's not it. Yeah, just he absolutely stubborn. It. Wow. He would never acknowledge when he was wrong. Never. And spoiler alert: he had major daddy issues. Hmm. Yeah. So, it, in fact, there was um, 
one point, um, his parents bought um, some property in, in Colorado and they were going out to check it out and they took us with them. <clears throat> and um, we were sitting in this restaurant, it was like a pizza place. This is like in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Um, so there's only like a couple of places to eat, especially dinner. And, um, and he started a fight with his dad and his mom and just going at it and to the point where he got up and left and just left me there with them. I'm like, mm. um, okay, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> so did his family, I'm really curious. So did his family, your family, or any of your closest friends say, Hey, this is really strange. So yes and no. I mean, they, they did. And in fact, I think he was a big reason why I lost my best friend. Temporarily. Temporarily. We were back to being buds again. But um, just the, you know, she didn't like him. Um, and then my, um, I moved in with somebody else uh, while we were engaged. We didn't live together while we were engaged um, till the very end, closer to the wedding. Um, and, you know, basically my roommates would be like, you know, what, you shouldn't be with him if he's making you so sad, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, but it, it, when you're that age and you're mm -hmm. like, well, everybody has, everybody argues, everybody has these little spats and, and I wouldn't listen to it. So that's friends. Um, did family say something to you? Because sometimes family, family didn't see it. Really? Yeah, he put on a show for my family. He was on family. his best behavior around the family. My, Very charming. Yes, yes, my uncle, in fact, um, said, "If you, if you get rid of him, can I keep him?" You know, really? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Well, what about when you'd go see your mom? If he always had you in tears when you'd go see your mom, would she blame it on you? No, 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 no. I, I mean. I would have calmed down uh, by the time by the time we got there. She's also so, like, I mean, um, Misty's not a, an emotional person, right. and I don't mean like she's not emotional. She's very she's shy, um, right. stoic. Yeah, right. stoic. You know, she and I. Part of why we get along now is we jokingly say she's Spock and I'm Data because we're just <laughs> kind of very analytical. Mm -hmm. So she could just pull, pull it together and 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 the drop of a hat, but inside she could be easily been seething. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add to the about whether anybody warned you or said anything. The friends did. Um, there was a few friends who were like, "Are you sure this is right?" Or because uh, we all noticed it, and part of it was like, "Well, it's none of my business." Some of the other friends said, "Well, I say something," and Misty's like, "Well, we, you know, we're both we're both strong headed, and we're both we like not arguing, but." Oh well, we kind of thrive on the challenge of the debate. Yeah, yeah, but she would. She you had um you had an excuse for it, right? And and yeah, and it was no excuse. But um, and then but, there, but you're young, and everyone around yeah. you is young, right. so you're trying to figure things out, yeah. and you're right. just like, right, is this gonna? And it's I can a, see that with friends too. Friends are like, well, I'm young, I don't need to be getting into this person's business and telling them no. I can ask a few questions, would be done. I think when we get older, we're a little more like, eh, it's probably not the person for you. We're a little more sure of what we say right so i'm just right. yeah so yeah. being young at that age and, and mm -hmm. trying to check all the boxes of life at that point right right yeah and you tend to justify things right yeah. mm -hmm. like well this probably is like this because and you don't know so you assume and you draw a conclusion right and uh -oh. i hadn't had very many boyfriends prior to him either i had only maybe Especially dated long like um at long term i dated three people four people four people before yeah before him and so you know i really had no frame of reference um my mom and my stepdad were miserable so i mean there was like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so this is like you're like Actually, part of and to give you any indication one of her previous boyfriends is someone who i like like he's such a nice guy you know what i'm saying yeah he's visited mm -hmm. us like i he and i are friends now and if uh are you friends I, with all her exes then? Not necessarily. <laughs> okay. no, I'm friends did, with the 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 ex. Yeah. I we stopped talking because I blew up at him, and it had to do with when they fully split. I just unloaded on the on the guy. But no, the the other boyfriend is someone who like if if I was on my deathbed, I'd be like, you should go <laughs> marry him. Oh, <laughs> oh no, really? I, I have no idea who you're talking about. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Can I say? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> and we for, can't for, say that for, name. For the, for the no, audience out there, he just mouthed it to her. He never visited us. God, I'm, it's the wine. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Other yeah, 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 he's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, we're playing a game of... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he's, a, he's just a sweetheart. He's, he's a great guy. He's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, he'll text... I'll marry the guy. Yeah, you ever die, he texts Chris out of the blue all the time. He's, he'll he's, text he's me out of the blue. He's, he's it's great. one of those where, you know, you're like, you like, oh, you guys were like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there, uh, there's a reason why we split up, and it was not me. <laughs> no, but he, it was it was really more about him, him wanting to do his career. Right. Uh, He's a musician. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Just him being really honest about, look, yeah. I'm probably never going to be around. Right, so right. So that's cool. Um, yeah, so and he's yeah so we gotta jump just right to your wedding okay. so, no, hold on hold on hold on wait, 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 we're, we're now at the we're now at the engagement so how yeah. long were you guys engaged before you so you said about a year uh, about a year about yeah a year. so you know take a year to plan things and um but nothing changed and you were no, everything was still for... like uh, we'd fight constantly so status quo so, basically yeah, yeah basically um oh there was one point um, and actually Chris remembers this story too, because we were having a party at my apartment with, oh, yeah. um, my, <laughs> my roommate. Fourth of July. Um, yeah. Fourth of July. Uh, we were grilling out, you know, we all lived in the same apartment complex except for him and a couple of other people, but we had like, you know, all our friends over at our apartment and, um, <clears throat> a f- one friend of mine, of ours actually and chris is still friends with him too i think um he just decided to give me a back rub out of the blue i just want to qualify this and say that the person who gave her the back rub was so amorous with everybody he would he was drunk off his ass he was drunk but he often give he would often give me very wet kisses with his entire tongue on the side of my face i mean he was just like like uh, uh. (laughs) He was just an he's, amorous he's, person. He's a strange person. It he, really didn't matter who it was. We're, I mean, we're, we're all musicians. And so, yeah. you know, it's s- similar to acting and similar right. to comedy. You're, you're you're just like out there people. Yeah. Just strange people. We all were. Um, so, yeah, he was being very touchy feely. But my ex was sitting behind me on this side and um, and the other guy was rubbing my shoulders. And I'm looking at Chris, who's across the way from me. And I'm like. I have I, I, just this expression on my face, like I don't know what to do. Like, do do yeah, I make him stop, or do me. I be rude and you know make him stop, or just let him finish and and deal with it? Well, my ex get, gets up in a huff and goes into my bedroom and has basically and, a silent tantrum. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. And you know, I'm trying to explain to him, like seriously, I he I, it didn't mean anything to me. He may have been overly touchy feely, but he was doing that with everybody. So was yeah. he? A- <laughs> then the problem was that the ex, after the fact, took it out on her. He could have easily just gone up to our friend and said, "Hey, N- knock it off, knock it, knock yeah. it off." But he, it was you know, her he fault. just wanted to make it awkward, so she had to eat that as far as like the the unease and the tension of it all. And then later on, I even said, dude, when it was going, when he was doing that, because we're talking about a back, like not even a back rub, just like a, a harmless shoulder rub. Yeah. But I was like. He wasn't she, like reaching down my shirt or like anything. She <laughs> locked eyes with me and gave me this look like, what is this idiot doing? <laughs> yeah. Like she wasn't happy with it. And the husband, or I mean your ex, he didn't even like recognize that you were uncomfortable. He just took right. it out on you. Yeah, right. Like, like it was her fault. Like, right. she, you know. like I allowed I allowed so, it. I didn't say no, so it was my fault. Was this the first sign that he was like really jealous or possessive, or were there other um no, there were others. Uh, and one involved the other um guy that we were talking about who's a sweetheart and visited <laughs> like all the time. Yeah, and he uh, the first I found about the oh, the old boyfriend was through her ex, who to me privately would say, like, oh, he that that and so and so and he he you know. So he really has like signs of a narcissist. Yes, oh, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He absolutely. is very possessive, very um very into attention seeking, you know, like the whole cooking thing and the whole like he really um, wants uh, he really needed people's approval. Yeah. Right. He really needed approval. And um, and I was kind of, apparently after the fact, I found out that I was basically a trophy. Wow. So. Especially in our group of friends. Right. 
Well, he figured he had the best. And well, in, in, in our group of friends yeah. with the in band and stuff, that we had a nice tight click of people. And yeah, Misty was kind of part of the Misty being introverted and aloof made her status go up mm-hmm. because she was perceived as being like, I don't, you know, her. I have, bitch, I have bitchy resting face. That's she, pretty much it. Just guys perceived her as like, yeah, go away. You're annoying me. Mm. But the him that was like, I got the one that no one else it. could. Yeah. And, exactly. And look at me. I'm the. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now you guys are engaged. Your engagement was how long? It was. It was about a year. Year. Um, and so flat, um, fast forward to wedding day. Um, actually, two days before the wedding. Yeah, the, like the wedding week. Something had wedding to happen between yeah. the wedding week. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wedding oh, wedding. Wedding. First of all, we go. they were trying to find a best man. Nobody really wanted to do it. Really? That says a lot. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't yeah. trying to find it. He was. <laughs> so guess who ends up being the best man? He, Chris. Me. Really? Yeah. Wait, and I, I didn't have a problem with it because that we were. All, I'm friends with both of them. I'm friends with the whole group. So you know, would you be my best man? Absolutely. But just to clarify this for the listeners again, you two are married now. We are married. We are now. married now. <laughs> yes. He truly was the best man. Spoiler alert! For first wedding. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Yes. Um. So a couple of days before um the wedding, he gets Bell's palsy. <laughs> Which You're, is, do you yes. know what this is? Yes. Yes, yes, my ex gets, gets Bell's palsy. So for the listeners who <laughs> and, do not know which, what that is, it's a kind of virus. They don't really know what causes it. But half your face is pretty much looks like it slides off. It's sliding I, off. I like to, you can have no movement in listen, your to, in yeah, the side like of your face. Stroke, yes, right. it does. To, and and this is my story, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to jump in. I am. Um, I had actually had it before he did i had actually had it like um i think maybe the year before um and it can be brought on by stress it can be brought on by any number of things but th- nobody needle yeah <laughs> no, no, nobody <laughs> nobody really knows what causes it they just it just happens and so you get you know a bunch of steroids and eventually it goes away um for the most part sometimes it doesn't completely go away he got it two days before the wedding <laughs> So what? talking about a sign right there. Uh, how long does it last? Okay. It lasts like three or four days, right? It lasts about a week. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Chris is raising his hand yeah. again. Yes, I have Chris. to say, because when she got it, and it was a, a while before. It was about a year. Yeah. He mocked her daily. I mean, just unmercifully laughing and making fun of her. And I was scared because even before I went to the doctor, because I, I started feeling it and like I couldn't, I didn't have taste um, my sense of taste had gone and, um, you know, my, and that's how it started is like, it, it started with losing t- taste in my tongue and then I'd stick out my tongue and it would go, whoop, uh, you know, over Which to the left. Wow, overlap stroke symptoms. Yeah. yeah that's very so scary. I'm scared. And you and stay he, married to this guy? Glenn is here. <laughs> Glenn has joined us, by the way, for our listeners out there. Glenn has showed up. No pizza rolls. No, you ate them all. No, we ate them all on that one episode. But just so you know, in case you hear someone in the background. So <laughs> so he has been making fun of you. That's terrifying. I can't imagine. Yeah, I, I was really scared. So, um, you know, when I was able to get, get to the doctor, of course, I went as soon as I could. Um, of course, I didn't have any health insurance. Yay. Um, or I was still on my... No, I didn't have any health insurance. But so I went to like a an urgent care type place. And, oh, my God. Um, he's like, yeah, you've got Bell's palsy. Nothing to worry about. Um, <laughs> so don't worry about the virus that you know, pretty much nerves yeah. or right. kills right. in your face. Right. So he's like, it's you know, you're you're young, it'll go away. Um, here's some steroids. And and so that was it. So then two days before our wedding, in space. It's like, God damn it. My ex's face. <laughs> Do you get it from wild sex or something? Or no, no, no. Probably not. <laughs> so yeah, it was just like really. Tile <laughs> it was just. It was bizarre. It just it happened two days before the wedding. He, you know, he, he gets he starts getting those symptoms. Wow, karma. and he was able to get into the doctor and start steroids, but he still you know had it during our wedding. So all those, of our wedding the, the photos. wedding photos are hilarious. <laughs> I wish horrible. I had saved some because he had like really exaggerated. Yeah, I I left them 
at the ex's house. Yeah. So, um, to paraphrase yeah, so- Doug Stanhope, why would you marry him when even God hated him? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, Colin is nodding his head. I, you know what? No one quotes Doug Stanhope very often, and and it's you know something that should be done considering. Yeah, it was. The it show's was going in the toilet. So it, it definitely should have been assigned to me, um, and it was not. Of course, we went on with the wedding, and you know, of course, two you know, two days before the wedding, what what am I going to do? You know, I've got family coming. First of all, it was in College Station, Texas, which um, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> I knew nothing about. I mean, like I visited because that's where his family lives. His parents were, prof- well, his dad was a professor at Texas A&M and his mom was a counselor at Texas A&M. So they lived in College Station. Um, and your parents also lived in Texas, though. They Dallas. did, but they lived in Dallas, which okay. is three hours away. So it's Slightly big difference. Culture. Yeah, okay. big, big difference. A little more cosmopolitan. Um, yeah. But, you know, his his dad was a New Yorker. His mom was his mom was from Georgia or Alabama. Alabama. But quite the they, upper class uh, yeah, kind they of were, educated, yeah, they were educated, worldly. Yeah. yeah. But regardless, my ex wanted to get married in College Station. All of our friends— are in the Dallas area. He wanted to get married in College Station because it was cheaper. He wasn't the one paying for it. I was paying for it. I should be in the woman's hometown from yeah. tradition, right? You paid yeah. for that? Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in more ways than one here. Chris is horrified. Are you kidding me? No, I am because I just assumed... Wow. No, oh, the bride wow. pays for the wedding. Yeah. The Ugh. husband pays for, or the, the, the groom bar. pays for the. Um, in, in rehearsal. The, wow. um, <laughs> I got screwed. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the groom she got pays smart. for the honeymoon. So, which, the yeah. I will add to the few days before the wedding. Um, I had just done Guys and Dolls, the show. <laughs> Don't, 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 you All right, thanks my, for clarifying. I done both guys and dolls. Mm-hmm. It was nicely, nicely. Uh, so the his father had come down to see it. He was in the pit of the orchestra. My ex was the ex. in the pit, and he was a very good musician. And I was um, Nathan Detroit. The mm-hmm. father came down. This is in, in yeah. Um, the father came down and or came up whatever north came and up, saw the he show. Came up and saw the show. So we're all hanging out a day or two before the wedding and the father, this is a good indication of their relationship and why he had problems. This is me showing empathy for the ex. The father would not stop talking about how wonderful I was in this show. And I would stop every so often and go, you know, your son was the lead player in the pit as a musician, he got paid. He got paid to be in that show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris, why don't you sing Wow, Lucky it, Lady or whatever. Yeah, why don't you sing was, uh, one of the songs, like the, the song you do with Adelaide? It was very sad. It, it was awkward and, yeah. Yeah. My, it, he made a my show of it. My ex definitely had daddy issues, and I think that's most like, most of the reason why he sought out so much attention from his friends is because he didn't really get any from his father. Um, he, um, first of all, he, his father was not happy with him being a music major. Mm. He wanted him to be I don't a think science major. Parents are happy with my their parents kids. were <laughs> thrilled. <laughs> really? Oh, oh yeah. They, oh yeah. Wow. They want. They were mad when I quit comedy. Really? My, my parents are crazy though. Well, <laughs> and, and at, uh, I was a music major for a brief period of time, and my my parents. Thought that was great too, um, but he was a music education major. So I mean, he was planning on going and teaching band. Right. I mean, that that's what you do. Yeah, so, but his father's a professor. A professor of of, of geophysics hard, one of the hard and geology, yeah. and so he wanted literally geology is a hard science. But mm-hmm. boom. So in fact, <laughs> uh, my ex, you know, Chris started college late. My ex actually started at UNT late because he spent a year at A and M doing <coughs> science. <laughs> yeah, because that's, yeah. Right. You're going to go to school where your parents work and, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's a good university for no, science. No, yeah. it's a great university. Not so much for music. So but why did he leave? So he left for music to go to North Texas. To, yes. Because which probably really pissed his parents off at the time, too. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't think, you know, they 
they came to terms with it, obviously, but, um, you know, I don't think that my ex ever um, got really his father's respect, especially after he decided to be a music major. And he was a really good trumpet player. I mean, really, he was was very talented. I was nowhere near the league of her Mm -hmm. ex. He was talking. No, no. no. Oh, we, we'll get to that. <laughs> no. Because we'll no. I, I had every intention to remain friends with him until something happened. And we'll get to that because that's towards the end of the Yeah, <laughs> the towards saga. the end of the story. So, um, wedding so, day. So, so, we've been hearing all of this about the wedding day. So, we've yeah. done a little bit about the wedding week. What happened on the wedding day that's. So, <laughs> we have a lot of pictures. Of course, we have a lot of musician friends. Um, so we had a lot of music in our wedding, um, during one of those songs, you know, there's a, first of all, he was Jewish. I was. So something happened Christian. during the wedding yeah, itself? Yeah, so I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. <laughs> ah, okay. Patience. Patience, he's, boyfriend. Patience. Wait, he's Jewish. You're a Christian. Yes. Okay. Sort of. Yeah. I was at kind of at the time okay. I was Things Christian. Have changed. Okay. <laughs> Things have dramatically changed. Chris is influenced. Um, so there was a unity candle and then there smart? was a um a uh, glass breaking. But so during the unity candle lighting, we had this long piece that was being played by this um, brass quintet. It was beautiful. And uh, my ex and I are, just, are holding each other's hands and he's looking at me going, okay, so after this, we're going to, we're going to go back to my parents' house and we're going to, we're going to do, um, you know, just hang out there. And then tomorrow, uh, and then we'll go to the hotel. Wait a minute. He said we, all of this, all of this <laughs> what, during the <laughs> wedding the entire agenda. ceremony. With Bell's palsy. Yeah. <laughs> With Bell's palsy. <laughs> yes. Can you do so, it how he said it? So no, uh, seriously. Uh, go down here, uh, go. Then afterwards, we're going to see them for those people and he had a little lisp too. Suck up the spittle. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're, they're going to meet the other people and go back to my parents' house and then um, at approximately two and a half hours we're going to have to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, he basically was like telling me like our next plan. So, okay, then we're going to go to the hotel. Then we're going to, in the morning, we're going to go to the airport because we, we did our honeymoon right afterwards. We went to Hawaii. She couldn't even enjoy your own wedding. I know. While this is going on, the bridesmaid Sorry, sorry, maid of honor. Maid of honor. Because remember, I'm the best man in this. Mm-hmm. In this, are you the thing. only two people standing up in this wedding? No, there's a there's a whole. Uh, like, no, they there was, a I, had, I think there were five. Yeah, five and five. Mm-hmm. Maid of honor just slowly turns her She's head like, and oh, makes really? eye contact with me, with eyes wide as can be, as if to say, "Are you shitting me?" <laughs> <laughs> and I I just like raise my eyebrows back and I go. Like, as if to say, are you really shocked? <laughs> and she just shakes her head and turns her head back. Just, we were just kind of dumbfounded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another clue to, <laughs> um, you know, another sign that I really should have paid attention to was the fact that he, um, one of his best friends from grade school was, um, she lived in Washington. She. She. She lived in Washington, and she came in for the wedding, and she was one of my bridesmaids. I'd never met her before, but oh. but I made her one of my bridesmaids because I thought, you know, I was it was a good gesture for my ex to, you know, say, yeah, you know, she's my friend too. Well, right. she, well you know, if she's your friend, she's my friend too. Um, he actually has like a special dance with her. At your reception? At our reception. <laughs> and you didn't and know this? Island. Wait, wait a minute. Like, did you know about this? Yeah, I knew. I knew. Oh. I just... They uh, planned? They I planned was a like, special oh, well, they're friends. Came... They're, you know. What? So he planned a special... Like, he did. Like... She didn't. He did. So, um, you know, and I was like, oh, that's sweet. Oh. You know, have, mm-hmm. you, you haven't seen your best friend in so long. And, you know, oh, that, that's really sweet. And there's a song that has her name in it. What was that song? I can't say because then I would give it away. But was it like a slow song? It was a slow song. Oh, yeah. Um, what? <laughs> I'm not going to say the name. Yeah. I'm so, Carrie? You a, yeah, that's okay. it. It's Gu- uh, Guadalupe. You know that song? <laughs> by the, so, by the, so, yeah. That, that was by, kind by of awkward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very <laughs> awkward. But, but you didn't think it was awkward at the time. No. Because you said okay to it. Yeah, I said okay. And I said... I stood back and watched it, and I was with a smile on my face, like it, you know, is the sweetest thing ever. Oh, Sherry? 
That's Steve Perry. So uh, let's just and, uh, was it, focus. Later. Who was focus. it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so um, so yeah, what else so that happened was on the wedding? A couple hours earlier, though. What before, before the their actual dance? wedding? No, yeah. To, um, bef- when, oh, before yes, the wedding the started, the most important part. Before the wedding started, they were taking photos, and they uh, the 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 um, photographer had the groomsmen, which I was the best man, and then they get the the bridesmaids and all them together, and then the photographer said, "Go get the bride. We're ready for photos with her." So I'm sta- I'm in a hotel room by myself, no friends, like everybody's off taking photos. So I'm by myself. Um, waiting basically for, you know, my bridal party to come up and put me in my dress and, you know, then go down to take photos with everybody else. Yeah. Um, so I'm just sitting there in my room, like completely just, made up in a gown, yeah. in makeup, fully ready even, for. Okay. I wasn't even in the gown yet. Oh, you weren't? No. Remember? I, I was wearing like oh, this, yeah, this I long. I, actually, I was wearing this very long um, button up shirt. Um, remember that, I was naked? But it's, it, it looked kind of like it was actually one of my ex's shirts. So it was long on me. and um, It was long on me so, too. But I had on like my hose <laughs> and my, my car. I got three conversations going on here. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Focus. Okay. So she's in this thing, and you're by yourself. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, you know, I'm. Uh, I'm actually underdressed for someone to to like to answer the door. Basically, I shouldn't have answered the door like that, but I did. So Chris is the one who comes up to come get me. <laughs> not a bridesmaid. Not a maid of honor. Not mom. Not any of the women. I was sent to go get her. Who sent you? I don't remember. I think the photographer. Yeah, but somebody but he had just a said we're ready. For, we're ready okay. for the bride, and oh so God. they said, "Come." Well, but so I can see I, that someone go get her. Well, and well, we were I, there I, and, I can't yeah. see that because having like that's what your maid of honor is right. for. Like yeah. you send the maid of honor. I think they were still doing photos though of them. The, of the, the men were done, okay. and I'm like, I think I just volunteered because that's kind of what I do. I'll right. do. I'll go get her. So I ended up putting on my dress myself. <laughs> Oh, and, and, but, no, but, the, but you know he knocks on the door and um and he's like they're ready for you and i'm like okay and just real quick my memory of that moment was opening the door and she's just sitting there staring off into nothingness she was just blank with this kind of somber look on her face and she very slowly turned and looked at me and you know if not okay and and I remember shutting the door and thinking, and I get a, I have to backtrack a little bit and say that leading up to this wedding, a lot of us friends were like, mm, "This is not the greatest marriage," right. and oh well. I mean, we didn't like. I had met, I had brought up to people, should they be getting married? And and other people had said, "Well, we've tried talking to her. She seems to be." Uncon- we can't really convince her that it's a bad mm-hmm. idea, but none of us were really sold on this right. wedding. And so this was just one more thing of like me walking away going, Ugh. And in my head, what's going on in my head at that time is, um, you know, it basically what I would say, it was cold feet. That's what I thought it was. It was just cold feet. You know, I'm being stupid, but I was like, I can't cancel the wedding now. I'm like, is this really the person I want to be with for the rest of my life? Um, I'm kind of stuck. You know, I can't just not go downstairs. Because all these people are already <laughs> all these here. People are here. Yeah. They drove from Dallas to come to College Station um, to be here to see us get married. And we had, you know, musicians and flowers and photographers and my parents and his parents. And, you know, it was like... I had family coming in from out of state. So I was like, okay, no, this is just cold feet. This is normal. You know, just get, get on with it. And I really should have just not. Yeah. If you were to go back and do it again. No, that's a really hard question to answer because I learned a lot from that relationship mm-hmm. and I learned a lot from that marriage and sp- specifically, um, <clears throat> things that I've been able to carry over into um, my relationship with Chris. 
but um shame he never learned anything from me. no he didn't he he's you know he's a he's a hopeless case if but. you didn't hear glenn he said shame nev- chris never learned anything <laughs> sorry so go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> Misty, okay. had- Casey didn't hear Leanne. <laughs> Casey didn't hear Leanne. oh i can i chime in real quick yes so when the when the ceremony was over and they left to do their agenda which he articulated <laughs> you know during the during the ceremony remarkable the, it was <laughs> uh again he was jewish and they we had you know you break the glass yeah. in the in the bag her maid of honor in a fit of brilliance ran across the street and bought a bottle of crown royal to get the purple bag so that he could break and the so glass they break the glass bag, in the bag we didn't have a bag so they leave and whatever room we had for the bride or bridesmaids whatever uh her brides her maid of honor and i went into this room together basically switched into our like just PJs. We cracked open this bottle of Crown and we spent the next four hours just bitching. Whoa, what an incredible journey Misty has been on. Well, Is that Misty, a journey? That's, 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 wow. Yeah, right? that's just a, a, a whole bunch of experiences that, yeah. wow. You guys, you're going to have to tune in next week because we have to answer these questions. What questions? Will Misty and her ex make it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> we already know she's divorced. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Will Chris and the maid of honor ever get out of the hotel room safe? After a bottle of Crown Royal, I don't know. <laughs> but he is sitting in front of us here for this thing. So right? he, he did, must have. <laughs> and how in the heck did these two, Chris and Misty, get together? That's the interesting part. So you guys, make sure you tune in next week for episode 70.